The slow climb begins. Scored a solid 2,235, moved up just under 8,000 spots. Rank is still dead in the water, outside the top 25k, but at least we're trending in the right direction. Let's look at the team. Defense was definitely my strongest line. Dude was standing captain against the Saints in just his 27th game, I'm pretty sure. And he was superb, particularly in the second half, getting intercept mark after intercept mark. It was great to see. Lloyd was good, as was Daniel. Ridley had a very fast start, was a little more quiet after quarter time, but 92 is not too bad. Doherty, you take that, considering late in the third, it was looking like another stinker score from him, but a big fourth quarter made his score look a lot more respectable. And the trade-in, Nick Haynes traded him in for Stasevich instead of Fife, because Stasevich kept his spot and I didn't want that price drop. Unfortunately, Haynes scored his lowest of the season, just a 75. Didn't help that he got matched up on Charlie Cameron for most of the first half. Couldn't really get his intercept game going, had, having to play as a lockdown defender. Got moved off him in the second half, though, and he, he was much better. If I had Sicily, though, I would have been 74 points better, and I would have won both my league matchups. The one league matchup I lost, if I had Sicily, I would have won it by a point. So that is a little heartbreaking. And on the bench, John Noble, late in, very good first half, quiet second half, but it's just good to see him back in the side. Hopefully he keeps his spot. Midfield, McRae, another great game. Simkin, the injury curse, strikes again. He rolled his ankle early, barely played the first half, but at least he played the rest of the game. And hopefully he'll be good to go against Carlton. Cripps, it's unfortunate we haven't really been able to see him at his best so far this season. Brayshaw is good. Cornelio, there was talk about him potentially being dropped for the Brisbane game, which was a bit ridiculous, and he responded with his best game of the season. Great stuff from him. Pickett was really good. Bennell was good as well. And McHenry, he tries hard, but he just isn't that clean with the footy, and he tends to give up a few frees here and there as well. The rucks were outstanding. Grundy, 144, had the vice on him, took that. And Gorn ends up going 41 better with a 185. He has been in unbelievable form, and he's averaging 153. That's insane. And the forward line, Dusty, his first time since the season opener, fought through the Luke McDonald tag fairly well in the first half. Devin Smith... He hasn't been that bad, it's just there's always something that lets him down each game. Most of the time it's his efficiency, but against the Dogs it was a few boneheaded plays, giving up a couple of silly frees, and I think he gave up a 50 as well. There's always something that brings the score down each week. Curtis Taylor, much better this time around. King kicked a couple goals early, but was pretty quiet for the most part. Traded in Rankin, of course, and he was great once again. Two games, two tons. Great start to his career. And that 53 from Arts could have been a lot better if he knew how to kick a set shot. Two straight with a snap on the run, but three behinds with a set shot. What could have been? So that's the team. Trades this week. We still have five, so I'm going to trade him out. And... Last week, I said the plan was to bring in Sam Simpson, so I've got to trade out a rookie to get him in, and at the moment, the plan is for Brando to make way. So we've got Fife and Brando out, Simpson in, leaving me enough for a primo. Last week, I said either Lockie Neal or Bailey Smith. Neal will drop a fair bit after his 87, getting tagged by DeBoer. Which leaves Bailey Smith, but I have two new options. Because the way these two are going, it is killing me not having at least one of them in the team. That's those top two names right there. Christian Petrarca and Hugh Greenwood. 
They have killed me in league matchups the last couple of weeks being uniques. And just not having at least one of them is killing the forward line. So those are the two options I have now. Petrarca and Greenwood. And I'm going to go with Hugh Greenwood. He's the main man at the moment in that Gold Coast midfield. Absolute tackling machine. Racks up the contested possessions. So I'm going to go with him, leaving me with 242.6k in the bank. Fife and Brander out for Simpson and Greenwood. Here's how the team will look heading into round 8. Going to loop Arts as Richmond play on the Friday night against GWS. Just want to add, another guy would have liked to have traded in for Nat Fife was Adam Trelaw. It's insane how much of a ball magnet he is. Never gets tagged, but he's just so expensive. He wouldn't fit the trade plan that cash is being saved for Lockie Neal. So I don't think I'll be able to bring him in at any point this season. But if you can afford him, he'd be a great pick and a great pod at this stage. Vice captain and captain. Not too sure. We'll leave the captaincy on Gorn. Vice, I've got a few options in consideration. Grundy's going up against Nickner. That could be an interesting battle. McRae, he's starting to get back to his best form. Definitely a solid choice. A bit of a pod VC choice, I don't mind, is Hugh Greenwood. The trade in last three scores, ball over 120. Definitely in the best form of his career. I don't mind chucking the VC on him, and I might do that. We'll give the VC to Hugh Greenwood for now. So the plan at this stage, provided that my team can stay away from the injury curse this round, would be to trade in Bailey Smith next week. Or Lockie Neal, if I can afford that. So essentially, I'm moving this whole Bailey Smith or Lockie Neal thing back a week. I could trade in Bailey Smith this week, I do have enough to bring him in, but the amount of donuts on the bench the past few weeks has been a little concerning, and I wanted to bring in Simpson before another price rise. I'm really interested to see what Supercoach will do with rounds 9 to 12, considering four teams have the buy in round 10, and a couple have it in round 11. Will we be seeing best 18 scores again? Could we even get an extra trade like we normally would in buy rounds? Just a couple of thoughts. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to leave it there. Good luck to all of you this coming round. And I will see you guys in the next video.